Let's talk about the anatomy of matrix, matrix multiplication. We're going to talk about two different types of matrix, matrix multiplication. One of them is called right matrix, matrix multiplication, where we multiply a modeling matrix A on the right hand side by an algebraic worker X. The other one is called left matrix, matrix multiplication. That's where we take a modeling matrix A and we multiply on the left hand side. Let's begin with right matrix, matrix multiplication. When we're looking at that operation, we see the following symbols. We take a modeling matrix A and put it in the left factor of the product. Then we take an algebraic worker X and put it in the right factor. Here, this dot symbol represents matrix, matrix multiplication. In other words, it's a product. Anytime we're doing a multiplication, we have two inputs or two arguments a left input and a right input. We could also call that the left argument and the right argument. Because the parts of a product are called factors, we can also call those the left factor and the right factor. The reason we call this a right matrix matrix multiplication is that we're going to assume that the matrix A arises is some modeling context. And then we want to do algebraic work on that matrix A to transform it into an equivalent system. So specifically, this is coming from some modeling problem. This is something we designed to do mathematical work. And we're hitting the modeling matrix on the right hand side with our mathematical worker to produce the product or output B. Let's put that into words. We use right matrix matrix multiplication in the following contexts. First, we start with a modeling matrix A in the left argument. Then we strategically choose an algebraic worker X to do specific mathematical work that we want to achieve. Then we hit A on the right hand side with X. In other words, we place X into the right argument of our product. Then we do the mathematical operation called matrix matrix multiplication to produce the output or also known as the product matrix B. As we've spoken about so often in matrix vector multiplication, when we are multiplying A on the right by X, we have some special conditions on the dimensions of those matrices. So if we say that A is an M by P matrix and X is a P by N matrix, these dimensions M, P, and N are all non-negative integers. Notice that the inner dimensions must agree. The inner dimensions must agree. I want you to march on the capital with protest signs, right? We'll see more about why this is true for matrix matrix multiplication. The point of the matter, though, is that the number of columns of A must match the number of rows of X. When that happens, we say that A is conformable to right matrix multiplication by X. If the number of columns of A does not match the number of rows of X, we say that A is non-conformable to right multiplication by X. Way to say that in standard English is you can't multiply A on the right by X because the dimensions don't agree. In other words, conformable and non-conformable is this nerdy language to say when are we actually allowed to multiply A on the right by some matrix X. Once we verify that the inner dimensions indeed agree, notice that they quote unquote cancel out and the dimension of the product is governed by the outer dimensions. In other words, the size of the product is governed by the row size of A and the column size of X. All of this discussion assumes that we're going to take a modeling matrix and hit it on the right hand side by an algebraic worker. In other words, we're going to transform our matrix from some real world context using mathematical work via right matrix matrix multiplication. Like we mentioned at the start of this video, there's also something called left matrix matrix multiplication. In that situation, we put the modeling matrix that we've constructed from some modeling activity in the right factor of our product and then hit it on the left hand side by an algebraic worker. Remember always that this little dot represents matrix matrix multiplication since the left factor is a matrix, the right factor is a matrix. Anytime we're doing multiplication, we have two inputs, one on the left and one on the right. We could call those inputs the left input and the right input. We could call this the left argument and the right argument. Parts of a product, parts of a multiplication problem are called factors. So when I say the left factor, I mean the thing to the left of the dot. When I say the right factor, I mean the thing to the right of the dot. I like to think about left matrix matrix multiplication as 
taking a matrix we already had and then hitting it on the left with some mathematical work that we want to do to that matrix. When we multiply X times A, we produce the product which is called B. This is the output of that left matrix matrix multiply. Let's recap what it means to do left matrix matrix multiplication one more time. So we start with some modeling matrix in the right factor of our product. We strategically choose some algebraic worker matrix X. This will do some special operation on the matrix A. Then we hit A on the left. So here's A. We're taking A and we're kind of hitting it almost like a hammer on the left hand side with the matrix X, which means we place X in the left argument. Then we do some algorithm to actually do the calculation and we produce the output matrix B of this operation. One of the themes I hope you've seen run through so many of our videos is to analyze dimensions explicitly. Also, remember when we're doing matrix matrix multiplication, the inner dimensions must agree, the inner dimensions must agree. We don't want any authority figure to try to violate that principle. The inner dimensions must agree. So in this situation where we have our modeling matrix in the right factor, we're going to hit it on the left with an algebraic worker. One of the things that we say is that the number of columns of our algebraic worker must align with the number of rows of the modeling matrix that we started with. In other words, those two dimensions have to align. Once we do that, when we produce our product B, the dimensions of the product are defined by the outer dimensions of the two factors. In other words, the number of rows of our algebraic worker matches the number of rows of our output. The number of columns of our modeling matrix matches the number of columns of our output. When we have two matrices that satisfy this condition, we say that A is conformable to left matrix multiplication by X. If, on the other hand, the number of columns of X does not align with the number of rows, we say that A is non-conformable to left matrix multiplication by the matrix X. These are just fancy ways to say, yeah, I can multiply on the left by X, or no, you can't multiply A on the left by X because the dimensions aren't right. That leads very nicely into the community challenges for this video. The first challenge is make a guess about when we would want to use right matrix matrix multiplication. What type of operations would align with multiply A on the right? If you want to know more about this, maybe you go back to our lesson on matrix vector multiplication. Hint, there's some similar ideas in that lesson. Yet a second challenge is to try to guess when we would want to use left matrix matrix multiplication. What type of operations, what type of manipulation, what type of algebraic work would we want to do on the matrix A if we were going to hit it on the left hand side by some worker B? by some hammer called X. You see it hitting, thunk, thunk, thunk. You just keep hitting this thing until it forms into some different version of itself. And we're gonna see that show up over and over and over moving forward in this class. Have a go at those. If you wanna put them in the comments so other viewers can read your ideas, please feel free to do that. We're gonna get really good answers to that in the rest of this lesson. I thank you so much for your attention. In the next videos, we're gonna talk about definitions of matrix matrix multiplication, different ways to do it, and then look at some examples. I'll see you there.